Did you know that Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease? In fact, there are more than two times the diagnoses compared to 30 years ago. Dr. Ray Dorsey, a neurologist at the University of Rochester Medical Center, and Dr. Bastian Blum, a neurologist at the Radboud University Medical Center, liken Parkinson's disease to a pandemic. They assert, neurological disorders are now the leading cause of disability in the world. Among these neurological disorders, the fastest growing is PD, whose growth is surpassing that of Alzheimer's disease. There is no cure, and there is even a subset of people that are diagnosed younger than 50 years old. So let's talk about it. Parkinson's disease is a movement disorder. It was first described by a man who was investigated for a plot to assassinate King George III. In 1817, James Parkinson published an essay on the shaking palsy. It is pathologically distinguished by the death of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta and the presence of Lewy bodies, abnormal protein aggregations within the surviving neurons. Now, who has the greatest risk for developing Parkinson's disease? Interestingly, Gender could be a risk factor. If we counted every person with PD, there would be 1.4 males for every female. The most consistent risk factor is age. In a room of 10 people over 60 years old, about one person will have PD. In a room of 10 people over 80 years old, three people have PD. Having a family history of Parkinson's is a risk factor. But actually, most cases are found to be idiopathic, or a disease of unknown origin. Environmental exposures are correlated with an increased risk of PD, such as pesticides, herbicides, and heavy metals. Curiously, cigarette smoking and caffeine consumption are correlated with a reduced risk of PD. So, what exactly are the symptoms of PD? PD is called a movement disorder because it is characterized by these cardinal motor symptoms. Tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia, and postural instability. In addition, non-motor symptoms range from olfactory loss to constipation to rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder, and NMSs can appear 10 years prior to the cardinal motor symptoms. The reason why Parkinson's can be so hard to diagnose is that the symptoms can be misdiagnosed as something else, such as the normal processes of aging or arthritis. Furthermore, there is no conclusive test for the Parkinson's disease. So I interviewed a doctor who could give us some insight on this disease. Uh, I, I'm a Parkinson specialist. <laughs> this is Dr. Katsushige Watanabe, who is a neurosurgeon at the Tokyo Metropolitan Matsuzawa Hospital. I first asked him, how do doctors diagnose this disease? Taking this image to us and deep history taking. How the patient's symptoms is developed, including the non-motor symptoms as well as the motor symptoms, is key to mm -hmm. make a diagnosis or to provide the best treatment to the patient. We need to rule out the, the similar disease. And the other diagnosis tool for making an accurate diagnosis is the image-assisted diagnosis. So that includes the MRI scan and uh, that scan. That scan shows the uh, dopamine reuptake loss in the uh, third item. I then asked him about the different stages of PD. At that prodromal stage, just before motor complications, it's lasting about 10 years. If the motor symptoms begins, for five years, the patient could have a beneficial effect by the medication. After the five years medication, 
most people experience the complication induced by the meditation, like drug-induced dyskinesia or drug-induced dystonia. So that means the even if the Pakistan patient take the meditation, the patient unlikely to experience the better motor performance the patient experienced before. In my opinion, this mid stage is a good period for introduce the surgical intervention like deep brain stimulation or coagulation surgery. This VM salamotomy, small coagulation lesion in the VM salams, is good for suppress of the tremor type. Symptom. So, in my surgery, the, if I have a tremor predominant type of Parkinson's disease patient, I recommend my patient to receive the salamotomy coagulation surgery because this salamotomy coagulation surgery is effective for completely suppressed or greatly suppressed the tremor symptom of the Parkinson's disease, almost whole life. STN or globus pilus GP, DBS, both are effective to reduce the cardinal motor symptoms. Maybe, in my experience, 10 years. This is a typical case of the subthalamic nucleus deep brain stimulation. Can you identify the STN? Mazenta color circle is the spot of the implanted electrode. That's small. Yeah, oh, very small. small. The diameter of the electrode is about one millimeter. In this stage, late period, most patients have bed ridden status. They are going to be in a terminal stage. In this stage, the most patients have a respiratory complication or cardiovascular complication. The patient did not die of Parkinson's disease itself. Most patients die of the complication of the end stage of the patient. One major complication leading to death is aspiration pneumonia or accidental fall down. If the patient is rounding to a later stage, the patient have no option like surgical intervention. This is definitely the care stage of the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, because of this keyword care, we need to develop the social supporting, health supporting system. There are a lot of patients spreading all over the world because many people living longer and longer. Many people have a chance or are likely to have a, a Parkinsonian symptom or a Parkinson disease in the future. So, what is the main point of this video? I'll tell you. The main point of this video is that due to a longer life expectancy and increased environmental exposures related to industrialization, more people, we, are likely to get Parkinson's or Parkinsonian symptoms. So, it is important that we advocate for better patient care and resources, demand for more funding for research, address medical costs and accessibility, and find a new generation of more effective medication. Parkinson's is incurable as of now, and compounded with the fact that the number of people that are diagnosed will only increase, we need to better advocate for Parkinson's disease.